<laughs> Yo, what's up? So I tagged a few of y'all on here. Y'all don't have to stay or if you're busy or whatever. You can come back, you can leave, whatever. Uh, but uh, a couple of y'all, Misty and uh, Rob, I wanted to tag y'all because I know y'all, you know, y'all are in the business. So y'all might be able to help me out with something that I might not know or might say wrong. And whoever wants to uh, dive in and add or subtract or whatever, it's all good. So, what's up, Andrew? Let me see who else dives in real quick. But I'm going uh, to still leave it afterwards. I'm going to post it. But this is what I said I was going to do uh, as far as like relapse prevention and just to dispel some myths about uh, addiction and alcoholism. Uh, yeah, so, and this is what I've learned and what I've been through, you know, me being a recovering addict myself. Uh, trying hundreds of times to get clean. I think I've been in treatment like about 675 times. It's an exaggeration, but you know, it don't feel like it sometimes. But it took, sometimes it takes people more than one time, more than two, more than ten, as it did, did myself. But, uh, so I'm waiting to see some other people dive in. I never did. I, I don't fuck with this live too much, but I am now, and I probably should stop cursing because I was going to send this video to my mother. So I'm going to try not to curse as much like I usually do when I'm doing these groups. And uh, for disclosure, so my job, ironically... Uh, asked me to do this by Skype um, eventually I don't know when we're going to start doing it but soon because we're not having people into the office as much and we cut the groups out so uh, they asked me um, actually after I said I was going to do it on here they asked me, it was weird, it was tripped out so I'll be doing this shit on Skype damn, uh, by video on, uh, with Skype with our clientele, which, to be honest, uh, they probably think Skype is an airline or some shit, and Zoom is the old TV, the kids' TV show. So, but I'm gonna do it. You know, I'm not gonna not do the shit. But anyway, so check it out. So, addiction, a psychological and physical inability to stop consuming a chemical, drug, activity, or substance even though it is causing psychological and physical harm. In these circumstances, a person has a behavioral addiction. Addiction is a chronic disease that can also result from taking medications. Addiction is defined as a chronic relapsing disorder characterized by compulsive drug-seeking continued use despite harmful, harmful consequences and long-lasting changes in the brain. It is considered both a complex brain disorder and a mental illness so addiction is a medical issue not a moral issue it's just so fucking strong and so powerful that it makes you do immoral shit sometimes because it's it, it takes over you know and and I hope I say this right uh, so when you first started so you try it once and so it strikes the core where where the uh, neurotransmission neurotrans damn it I can't even say the fucking word right now transmitters neurotransmitters kicks out the dopamine but it starts the more you get high it starts kicking out more and more and more and more dopamine and it starts going faster and faster and faster and faster, you know, and then it slows down and then that's when you start doing more and more and more and more and more and more, and more drugs. 
in order for you to, 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 to feel the same effects. And then when the dopamine starts to slow down and you start it, it losing it and it starts busting out slower, then, then you, you start doing more again, more and more and more trying to get that same initial feeling. Hey, what's up, Patrick? What's, what's up, um, LaPetty? So, so when you, so basically when it comes down to it in layman's terms, so when that dopamine starts, stop kicking out by the neurotransmitters, then it all comes down to what you're trying to do, what you are doing is chasing that very first fucking time, that very first feeling, and let me tell you, you never get that shit back. You never get that back. You know what I'm saying? You never get that first hit back. But you try and try and try. So then, so while you're trying, and you're doing more and more and more, trying to get that very first feeling back in the body or the brain, while you're trying, you're feeding your body more of this shit. You have to have more. Your tolerance level goes up and shit. So you're doing more and more and more. So, then, and it, it gives you the euphoria, okay? So, euphoria is, is, the, feeling, it's, it is the feeling that takes you up here. That is the euphoria. And, Lopetti, anytime you want to jump in and say something, because I know you know a lot of this shit, because you, you know, you know, I know you know. So, you can help me out if you need me. So, the euphoria takes you up here, right? And it keeps taking you up here. You know, you for that first time, the first few times and shit, you take it up here, taking it up here. Especially for my speedsters, okay, the, the, the crack smokers, cocaine, and the meth. So it takes, it takes you up here, taking you up here, taking you up here. The problem is, the higher you get, the harder to fall each time. Each time you, you're doing more and more and more, it's taking you higher, higher, higher. And then the fall, bam, and the, the others coming down, in other words. So when you're coming down, you know, you're getting highs, taking you up here. And then when you're getting, you sobering up, bam, getting higher, trying to get even higher, bam. And eventually, you're going to get so fucking high that everything just fucking explodes. And then, bam, you splatter from the dysphoria, which is the opposite of the euphoria. Okay, so you're taking your high all, all the way up here, all the way up here, all the way up here, higher and higher, and the fall, bam, and each time you're hurting yourself, you know, you're falling, you're falling, so eventually that fall is going to lead to a splatter, and you're not going to be able to get high anymore, because you'll be dead, basically simple, in simple terms, you know, and so, so, with the endo so endorphins and dopamine. So endorphins can be kicked off simply by like shit, aromatherapy and fucking simple as fucking dark chocolate. And it's, it's triggered by physical pain. Dopamine is happiness that is triggered when you get a new reward. You know, say you got a new job or uh, and you see the finish line. So and then your brain releases dopamine. So that's the good part when, when the dopamine is coming out regularly. You're doing positive shit and you're getting that dopamine as opposed to when you're getting high. And it and those neurotransmissions start speeding out that dopamine until it just it's just too fast and it stops and it's gone. Okay? So one important thing I always stress as far as the endorphins, after you go get into sobriety is Exercise, exercise. Whether it's walking, riding a bike, uh, whatever exercise possible, whatever is triggering, you know, whatever you can do physically to keep keep it moving, get some exercise. That helps. Because a lot of us, when we get sober, and I'm sure y'all have seen it, we get bigger. A lot of times, because we chilling, you know, we ain't running the streets and shit no more. 
on the hustle and shit. So we feeling good and we eating good because our ass wasn't eating when we was getting high and shit. So we trying this when we had, our ass hadn't tried in fucking years. And then we getting our, our mama feeling good about us and shit. And we like, mama, cook that for me because we ain't had no more because we wasn't getting along and shit. So I'm ready for some of that. So we're eating and getting big, and we're not getting the exercise. <laughs> I know, Morgan. <laughs> and, yeah, Andrew, I know. <laughs> and, yeah, so, and, and it's all good, but, you know, we got to get some exercise, too. You know, I'm, I've gained, so I started at 170. I'm now 210, but I've worked out, too. And some of it is, most of it is muscle, but also I have been eating well, too, you know. So, yeah, so we get that weight back. Our bodies start, you know, start gaining that weight back and shit, you know. So, back to, so when we're getting high, and we've been doing it for so long, you know, we get used to it. And it becomes our fucking new normal. And I know my guys have heard this before, as most of y'all, some of y'all, you know what I'm saying, in my, in my groups and shit. It becomes our new normal. Feeling high becomes our new normal. Being sober it's what makes us uncomfortable physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. So being high becomes our new normal, which is the trick that <laughs> y'all is just chill. Patrick and Andrew, which is our new normal. Uh, see, y'all made me lose my, my fucking train of thought. Oh, yeah, so... It becomes our new normal. So being high becomes our new normal. And being sober makes us uncomfortable and shit. And that's the trick. That's the trick the drugs played on us. It's playing on us. It's making you think, come on, motherfucker. You need me. You need me to feel normal. You know what I'm saying? You need me to feel good, which is a trick and a lie. You don't have to be high in order to enjoy life. Because... In the end, basically, it's telling you, come on, motherfucker, you need this to feel good. And then, eventually, I'm going to do what I do and take you the fuck out. We know people that that ha it has done that to. You know what I'm saying? We know. Then, then, what, Morgan? And, and yes, it's a trick. Exactly. It fucking tricks us. It's tricked us all. It tricked me for fucking years. Until finally, all those times, it, thank you, it will trick you every fucking time. So all those times, those 625 times that I went to treatment, some of that shit, for the, la the last time I went, eventually, some of that shit started, started making sense, started making sense, and then those seeds that were planted in the first 624 times started sprouting, started sprouting. See, a lot of times it's just about, I rarely know anybody that has uh, done it the first time. So, it's about planting the, planting the seed and risk management. Because, that's right, bro. That's right. Exactly, uh, Morgan. So, um, damn it, I got to stop responding because I lose my train of thought. But... Um, What was I going? It's a trick. And then... Damn! So, yeah. So, it plays a trick on you. Make you think you need it. Where did I go? What was I going? Anyway, I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway. So, yeah. So, that's that becomes our new normal. So, then... Um, so, think of it like this. So, we tried that first time. Nobody knows. Nobody... For y'all that hasn't experienced it that may check this out nobody has any um ideals or uh ambition to be a fucking addict thank you miles nobody has any ambition to be an addict nobody knows that we're gonna go down an addictive path you know and depending on them, that's right. Nobody knows we're going. Nobody knows where it's going to take us. They try. Everybody tries something sometimes. Hell, listen. It's really not even about the drug. It's about the thinking. It becomes an obsession of the mind because whatever we do, us with the, that addictive thinking, we need a lot of whether it's food, sex, gambling. 
fucking adrenaline, which is, you know, like driving fast, fucking, uh, I can't say roller coasters because, you know, we don't get to go on roller coasters like in an addictive manner, but you get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So most of the times we have to have a lot of whatever we're doing. So it's not necessarily about the drug. It's about our thinking. So then it comes to us changing the way we're thinking, uh, buying shit, shopping. That's right, Morgan. So it comes down to us and our way of thinking. So we have to change our thinking. And that's called dialectical. I'm not going to even try it. CBT. DBT. I'm sorry. Dialectical behavior thinking. So and that's and that's where mine is. Mine is behavior modification and DBT. That's uh, that's the basis of my recovery. Okay. So as far as treatment, so let's talk about. I'm gonna talk about treatment. To me, and this is what I, what I've witnessed, and I know for a fact there was no way I could be sitting here doing this right now if I didn't go to treatment. And again, it took me many times, but still, I think it's very, very difficult for somebody to just walk in the rooms. I'm going to get to the rooms, too. Just walk in the rooms and say, hey, my name is such and such, and I'm here, you know, uh, to get clean. I think we have to feed our brain with a lot of the medical aspects of it first and know what the fuck we're fighting against. So feeding our brain with the knowledge of what addiction actually is. Learning about this shit. That way we are strong enough to stronger to fight this shit off. So treatment, treatment as uh is essential because it also cuts off your time to have the access to going to buy it. You know what I'm saying? It gives you a little time. Plus, especially for my downer people, my heroin addicts and uh, Xanax, benzos. You need to be under a medical care, under medical care. Alcoholics too. I'm not gonna pass that up. Alcoholics have it even worse than addicts because if you go cold turkey with alcohol, you can die from the delirium tremors (DTs). I know you heard of DTs. Alcohol and benzos are the most dangerous. To come off of You cannot just stop You cannot just stop You cannot just stop in any drugs Because people, you know, because you hear people And all of us, the addicts, we know Well, why can't you just stop? I tried it once and I don't do it every day And I'm not I'm not an addict Well, you probably didn't have that That, should I call it Gene in you or that Trigger, it probably didn't trigger that Addictive behavior Or you don't have those addictive that addictive thinking that we had, you know, some of y'all can do it and quit. Some of y'all can try cocaine once and quit, do a blow once and quit, drink on the weekend and not drink throughout the week and stay drunk all the time. You know, some of y'all can and that's good. That's great. But some of us can't. So some of us cannot just quit. Okay. Just can't quit getting high like that if you're in addiction. Very, very very rare okay so we have to so we have to have we have to gain the strength to be able to fight it which is knowledge feeding your brain and then also we have to relearn how to feed our spirit you know what I'm saying because we forgot how to enjoy life we stop doing shit stop going to the movies stop hanging out with family because they didn't want our greasy ass around anyway after we started fucking up Damn, I said I was going to share this with my mother and I'm so fucking, so cursing. But, uh, so, they didn't want us around anyway, so, you know, um, regain those things we used to do. Riding roller coasters, traveling, you know, a lot of stuff that we used to do coming up, we stopped doing. Playing sports, playing basketball, whatever, whatever. We stopped doing that because dope became our number one priority. You know, that's what we woke up thinking about. That's what we went to bed thinking about getting high. That was everything. That was our career. That was our career to get high, to find a way to get high. That was our whole life. That's the sickness. See, 
the sickness is. Wanting to go left, but the dope's telling you, no, you need to go right because mother, because we're over here. Okay, we're over here. <laughs> we're not over there. Why are you trying to go that way? Come on. Come on, we got you. Okay? That, yes, sir. That needle. Yes, sir. So, so that's the power of addiction. That is the power. So, again, so it comes down to feeding our brain with knowledge and rewiring our thinking. Rewiring our brain. And I'm going to put this in layman's terms. So, think of our brain as, I don't know what kind of machine that has all the wires. Like the blue wire, the red wire, the white wire, the yellow wire. So we start getting high. And the more we start getting high, it's like motherfucking scissors or a razor blade flying around in our fucking brain. Damn, I keep cursing Flying around in our brain and uh, slicing those wires, just sl s separating them. So then, so we're in the process of all this. All of our wires are disconnecting. And so, you know, we're going through life and our wires, our wires flying around everywhere in our brain. So then the fuck, the. The blue stars hooking up with the yellow wire. The white stars hooking up with the red wire. And then that's when we start making stupid decisions. Because our wiring is so screwed up. Co connecting to the wrong wires. So we start doing stupid shit. Doing shit to take us to jail. Driving drunk. Getting into fights. Cursing out our family. Stealing from our mamas. We start making stupid decisions because our wires are disconnected and connecting to the wrong wire. They slap it on the wrong wire, the blue to the red, the black to the white. So then when we get to the other side, when we finally start having enough, we get to go to the treatment. We start reaching out. It all starts with the desire to stop, though. If you don't have a desire, it's not going to work. It's not going to work if somebody is making you, is pushing you in. Some people may have had the threat of jail and, it, and, and you know, they may have stopped. It may have worked. But your best chance, giving yourself the best possible chance is by feeding your brain with the knowledge of the disease that you carry, just like Somebody with cancer, they get them up, they get them books and read about cancer. You got diabetes, they get them books and talk to the doctors and, and Googling and they, they feed in their brain with the knowledge of the disease they have. And you do have to be willing to try a new way. Yes, Morgan. So they, you got to feed your brain. Feed your brain. Learn about this, this this disease. So, as you learn about it, you have more of a shield, yes, Andrew, to put up to block off some of that shit. A shield and a motherfucking sword. Fight that shit off. That's the knowledge. That's when you internalize the knowledge of how to control your addiction. To learn about it, and then you can learn how to get a handle on it. Okay. So then, when you're when you're when you have the shield to fight it off, you have your, your sword to help fight the shit off. Eventually, in time, in time, those wires start to re be replaced again. The blue stars hooking up the blue with the black electrical tape now. Because you're not going to get all the way back to the very beginning before you ever touch the drug. So, you get the electrical tape of recovery. Go to anything else to keep that one fir that first one out of you. Yes, sir. So, you're getting that, electric that electrical tape. The black stars back connect get back connected to the black. The yellow gets back connected to the yellow with the electrical tape of the knowledge that you gave about your disease. The white to the white. So, then... Soon we start making and changing your environments. Yes, Anita, that's part of it. Let me get to that too. So, so we start, you know, those those wires start coming back, start being back connected, and we start making better decisions. We have more of a, a a shield now to block it off and a sword to chop through the bullshit. Okay, to fight it. Okay, so so then. 
the longer we're clean, the better our decisions become. The better we are at making decisions because all the fog is clearing, all the wires are reconnecting, so we're making better decisions and life gets better. It's much better on this side than that side. No doubt about it. So, uh, a lot of times, a lot of us start getting high because, you know, we either have emotional or mental disorders. Let's go there. Some of us have had traumatic experiences. And ladies, and I wish it was more ladies on here, but a lot of females, and I'm sure my guys, I've told my guys this in group, I don't know which groups, I've told several of my groups this, but a lot of females and some males, but they won't, a lot of males won't admit it. A lot of addiction starts from a lot of sexual abuse and emotional abuse and mental abuse from whomever touched the woman physically. 65%, I believe the number is right. I can be corrected. Somebody can correct me. But I believe it's 65% of addictive women have suffered sexual abuse. This not even, this don't even count with the, the emotional and the mental abuse of that daddy who wanted a, a son but got a daughter and didn't treat her right or that mama also who couldn't stand the daughter because she was up and coming and her life as she used to know it was over because she had this daughter and sons too sometimes mothers can be that way so we don't have no love. We don't feel any love. So what do we do? I'm sorry. Let's go back. We're having these traumatic experiences, the emotional and mental abuse. So what do we do? We try to numb their pain from drugs and alcohol and or alcohol or whatever, even sex, especially for women. They feel worthless after being abused, especially sexually. They feel abused, so they going out there and sleeping around, and we have to give them some props, not props, but some empathy, because we don't really know what they've gone through, what they've been through. Women have been through so much from the beginning of time, so we don't know what they've been through. So, so, uh, and so we get high or get drunk to numb the pain. At the same time, think of that word numb. And y'all, I've told y'all this before. I've even posted this. Numb. So when you're trying to numb the pain, you are also numbing the joy. Numb. You're feeling nothing. You might think you're feeling joy. You might, you're getting that temporary feeling, but the high don't last forever. You know, you have to hit that dysphoria still. Especially my speedsters. Eating. Yes. Who is Angela? Who is Angela? <laughs> okay, that's what's up. Hey, Angela. I don't even know you, but glad you're here. So, yeah, eating, yes. See, addictive is really, is, it's really not even about the drug fake fun. Th thank you, Andrew. <laughs> if I remember it, you remember all my shit, boy. Eating, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Gambling, whatever it is. There is no positive obsession. Obsession is not a positive word, Okay. You don't want to obsess over anything. You want to always be in the middle of everything. Not too high, not too low. Just in the middle. Okay? But not with drugs. Okay? Drugs will always... They were, listen. The consequences will always outweigh the reward. The consequences will always outweigh the reward of getting high. When it comes to dope and crap and abusing, abusing alcohol. Abusing and addiction. Addiction. Uh, change. Yes, you got to change your environment too. You can't. So <clears throat> some people go into treatment, you know, and they come out, and you know the family or the friends on the block, you know, have a big ass parade. You know, hey, you're back, you're cured, and you know, and these a lot of them are the same people that they got high with. You know, they grew up with. You know. Little uh, Jaquan and uh, Billy, Billy, Billy Joe, whatever, whomever, you know what I'm saying? Kyle, you know, Saquon. So they go back to them same people that they screwed up with, and and 
thinking and not realizing that the risk is still there. You know what I'm saying? For them to go back because they hang with them same people. Listen, <clears throat> if your boy or your girl are still doing the same thing that you've gotten away from, you have no loyalty towards that. And you're trying to get yourself clean and they're still trying to do the same, live the same exact way. That is bad environment. That is, if you, if you still hang with them and they, because eventually they're going to be like, come on, you can do one. You can do one, just one, just try one time. You are right now, okay? Others have to die in order for others to survive. That's right. And some have to get sicker before they can get better. But y'all can have come off the birth table together. Your mom over here, uh, his mom over here, and both of y'all popped up on that table together. But... And y'all grew up together all the way up, okay? But you ventured off, got yourself together, and he's still, still sitting here doing the same stuff. You have no loyalty to him at this time while he's still screwing up. You have no loyalty to him to be around him. You can say, holler at him from distance. What's up, bro? You know, down the block. But you can't hang out with him because you're at risk. You're putting yourself at risk. I know you can love him from a distance. And until they get their stuff together, till they come over to your side, till they, uh, you don't owe him anything. Until they come over to your side, that's right, Morgan, then, or her, till they come over to your side, you have no, you don't have to practice no misguided loyalty to them because you're talking about your life. This is a life or death situation. This isn't a stop and start. This is a life and death. Right, Morgan? We know. This is life or death. Okay? So you have no loyalty to them. You can be there for them. Hey, holler on the phone, text, but they're hanging out. That's not safe. It's not safe. That's all I'm saying. It's just not safe. Uh... So a lot of a lot of times, especially my downer people, withdrawal. Listen, withdrawal. One thing about withdrawal, it's not gonna last forever. That's part of your consequences. You should get sick. You should feel some pain. To not want to go through it again, not go back and get high and start all over again. You should realize that that is a part of your consequences. So. People that and that the people be like and people scare other people. Man, I was throwing up over the toilet and my back and and my legs and I was in so much pain. Listen, you've had the flu longer than you you will have withdrawal. You will have the flu longer than you will go through withdrawal. Withdrawal will not last forever. You have to let yourself get through it. You know what I'm saying. You have to let yourself get through it. It will not last forever. And that's what you, you have to know this. You have to you have to program that into your brain. Withdrawal does not last forever. Tell somebody for my clean people. Let them know. You do not, and I tell my clients this now. You know, this that's a whole nother story, but withdrawal will not last forever. You don't have to depend on MAT. What you have to depend on is the work that you're going to put into staying clean. You know, the flu will last longer. It's a trick. That's right, Morgan. The flu will last longer than withdrawal. More times than not. Okay? A cold. Okay? Yeah. So, and, so, her, uh, downer people or heroin addicts will suffer the physical withdrawal. For my speedsters, there is... A, I'm sorry, an emotional withdrawal. There is an emotional withdrawal. It's more than physical. And, and the problem is coming up now where I've heard, and I don't know for sure is that how true this is, but some treatment centers will not take uh, meth addicts or cocaine addicts. Some people, you know, you have to be going through physical withdrawal. And that's ridiculous because addicts go through withdrawal period. If it's not emotional, then it's physical. I always tell other people this, and I hate, I don't, I don't say this to brag or 
And they say, oh, the, one nurse actually told me, oh, you're not an addict then. then. But, so I was a downer. I was a heroin addict. I never went through withdrawal when I stopped. I didn't have to have any kind of medication. I went through some, you know, problems sleeping. I didn't have the back aches or none of that throwing up and none of that shit, you know. I even had, I'm cursing again. I even had a doctor that wanted to do a study on me, you know, because I never, I just never went through it. I don't know why. It's nothing I did, you know. I just never had to go through it, and I, I guess that's a blessing, but. And I know it's easier for me to say, hey, withdrawal don't last forever because I didn't go through it, but it doesn't. It doesn't last forever. From what I've witnessed, the flu lasts longer. But there is the emotional withdrawal because the depression is so heavy for speedsters. It's so thick on the other side. It's so just draining that depression of somebody coming all the way up here and then having to come down off meth, oh my God, off cocaine. I remember my, my, my little time smoking cocaine. That other side, that depression, oh my God, it was mornings where I just wanted to just end it all. I'm glad, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm glad I wasn't, but because I wasn't a speedster, but I just, that depression is so heavy and so thick. So I feel for y'all. So there is an emotional and mental withdrawal. Just because you don't feel the effects physically coming down off, off meth or cocaine, it exists. Trust me. Uh, so staying clean becomes a new part of your career. It's, it becomes the part of your fabric. It's your new career. With your job, with you trying to advance in life, you have to have a pocket in there for when you're practicing how to stay clean and sober. It all starts with change. Changing your thinking. It's not about stopping. It's not about stopping getting high like all those people that don't understand are telling you, hey, you can stop. I did it once and I stopped. No. It's about changing the thinking. You know. I don't like the term changing everything. I even hear people be like, uh, yeah, I changed everything. I even changed the way I walk. I'd be like, the fuck you start what you do start walking sideways or some shit you don't no what the book and the steps do is is allow you to pinpoint what does need to be changed basically you know there's it's virtually impossible for you to you know you don't let's like jump into a um a phone booth in a suit and then come out in a superman's outfit you know it takes steps to change 12 12 and the feeding of the brain you go to treatment to attain you go into the rooms to maintain you go to treatment to attain A-T-T-A-I-N you read the big book to maintain treatment to attain get you a sponsor to maintain You don't have to be obsessive about it either. You don't have to be obsessive. You don't have to, you know, listen to fear tactics, but it is a life or death, death situation. Take what you can use. Don't stress yourself out. Take what you can use. And the other, put it by the wayside. Okay? But listen to everything. I'm sorry. Hear everything. Hear everything. Allow yourself to hear everything, you know, because you can't listen. You can't you have to hear. You can't just listen. You have to hear. You have to internalize everything. And it might not fit you, so you can you can let it out. Cool, calm, and collect. Know the price of life. Damn right. Damn right. You, and you also, you can't do it for other people. I hear, you know, in, in, in treatment, I see, you know, women and guys, oh, I need to get my kids back, and I need to do this for my kid. I always say, do you think your kid is better with you right now or better with where they're at right now? Unless they're in a total dire situation. So you change you to make you better, to make you strong enough, to make you big enough and bold enough. And you, when you get that strength, then you go there for, me, for your kids. You go back to your kids. When you gain that strength from recovery, 
treatment and recovery. Then you go run for the kids. Go get them. But you have to make sure you're strong enough. You can't be, you know, still having these this weakness that addiction has afforded you and go and talk about getting your kids. Give yourself some time. And they will come back around. As long as they see you doing well, they will come back around. Sit your ass and listen to you. Learn some shit. Damn right. That's right, Morgan. That's right. So, listen, you'll get your, your kids will come back. Your family, everything comes back. Your family, it may not be the same, but they come back. The better you do, the better people you're going to attract, the better people are going to start looking at you. The more res respect you're going to earn, especially coming back from what we've come back from. Shit. Coronavirus ain't shit compared to what the fuck we, damn, I keep cursing. Coronavirus is nothing <laughs> is uh, compared to coming back from being the bottom of a barrel addict. So, yep, promises, bro. And it's like when you start, it's like swimming upstream. Those big ass waves come and smack you in the face. But as long as you keep swimming, those waters gonna become less choppy. And they're going to be more and more calm. But you still, you got to keep swimming. You can't stop swimming upstream. That is like, a that is addiction. That is recovery. I'm sorry. So you got to keep swimming. But you cannot stop or you're going to drown. You just got to keep swimming until the waters become less choppy. So, how long is that? How long have I been doing this shit? Yep, so you got to keep swimming. You got to keep at it. You can't stop. This is a work forever. You never, you can't never stop. You can't lay on your, ro uh, your royals. What is it? Your laurels. <laughs> you can't rest on your laurels. A few things um, to avoid relapse. With my real glasses. I just had them. So, the most important part before relapse isn't the final decision to use drugs. It is when you decide to expose yourself to triggers. Be, know your triggers. If you're feeling the urge to use, try and wait it out. Don't act on it. You don't have to act on it. What's up, Logan? You don't have to act on your triggers or your cravings. Don't act on it. They will pass. The longer you clean, the, the, longer, your tri your, the, the longer you clean, the less cravings you will have and the less intense they will be. Let it pass. They will pass. I promise. Focus on replacing your drug use with a few positive activities, whatever that is. Uh, don't try to do this alone. Sharing your goals of sobriety with friends makes all the difference. Remind yourself that cravings will pass. Okay? You have to make sacrifices beyond giving up the drug. If you previously used doing specific activities, for example, watching TV on watching a game on TV, going to concerts, or spending time with friends, you may need to make changes. Have a plan when things get bad, because at some point they will. Life will be will not be peaches and cream. You will still have problems. It's just a matter of how you're dealing with them. You're learning how to deal with them differently, okay? Um, don't become complacent during your sobriety. This is a work forever. This is part of your new career. If you do relapse, don't give up. Never give up. Keep fighting. Trust me. I'm, I did, did not give up. Finally. I got it. I don't like to say I got it. I shouldn't say it. But I hate that. I hate when people say, oh, you got this. No, motherfucker, I ain't got this. You know, I got it. I got it today. And I don't like being congratulated either. You know, when I say, oh, yeah, I got six years clean. Don't congratulate me. I always say good job. That's right. Life doesn't stop. Keep making the right choices. That's right, Morgan. I always say, um, I always say good job. You know, congratulations means like it's a, something you just done. And you know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to get it right. Congratulations means it's one event that you've uh, accomplished. But it's not. This is ongoing. So I always say, hey, good job, bro. You know what I'm saying? I never say congratulations. I don't say anything about other people saying it, but I just don't like it. 
If you do relapse, don't give up. A lot of people find it helpful to keep track of how long they've been sober. But do not confuse this count with the true goal of leading a good life. If you're at day 100 of sobriety, that's great. However, if you make a mistake and end up back at day zero, know that you are not starting over. You gain knowledge, ex experience, and confidence. In other words, slipping up is not a license to go on a binge. Yep. Come up with new rituals, how to celebrate holidays, promotions, and other happy occasions. Holidays is a big issue for uh, addicts. So be careful with 4th of July, Memorial Day, with the barbecues and shit, and the beer flowing, and the weed, and, and you know, people sneaking into the bathroom plate is in the fucking cabinet waiting for you be careful just be careful with the holidays birthdays too you know birthdays all of that just be careful with that you can celebrate any day there's 365 days of the year you don't have to wait to a certain day to celebrate life that's it that's it you know so uh so I'm going to leave it at that for now. So, like I said, uh, I said in the beginning, you know, this is, uh, so my job actually asked me to start doing this online. <laughs> so, man, I'll do it again then, Morgan. Uh, maybe, uh, probably, maybe f next weekend. I'll come up with something else. But this is good practice for me uh, because, you know, with the coronavirus, I'm not doing any groups right now, but they want me to start doing some by Skype. I'm not sure our clientele even know what Skype is, to be honest. Just to be honest about it. Uh, so this this has been good practice. Um, and let me say this about my Gateway crew, and I mean this 100. Y'all made me. Y'all was the, the first groups that I'd done. You know, I did little. Here and there speaking at, at treatment centers, well, in Texas. But y'all made me because I would sit there and I would spew all of this, and I could, I, and y'all gave me the respect. Y'all, uh, y'all participated. Y'all, y'all taught me. Y'all made me better because I could see. I looked at y'all. I could look at y'all. And see the child just be right there with it, and I'm and 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 actually, honestly, I'd be like, wait a minute, who the hell am I? You know what I'm saying? Like these guys are listening to me, to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm this, you know, introverted, grew up shy kid, and I'm sitting here in a room full of guys, and they are actually listening to me. Y'all made me my Gateway Springfield crew. And I am y'all. Y'all think y'all grateful to me? I'm grateful for y'all because y'all made me better. Y'all made my recovery better. Y'all made my uh, calling better. My 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 job better. The work that I do. Y'all made me better. And I've been wanting to say that. I don't know if I said it before, but I have to say it now. Um, I try, I'm gonna have to try Zoom again. I tried it. Uh, Logan and I gotta try to get. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do that next time. I'm gonna try that next next time. I'm, I'll do this next week and I try to put it on my tablet. I had tried it on my phone, but it it didn't work out right. And I don't even think you could do it on the phone. Actually, now that I find out, but yeah. So you know, the gratitude goes both ways, guys. Y'all, y'all, my Gateway Springfield guys made me. That's why I have y'all here. Y'all don't even know that. Y'all made me, for real. And I'm grateful. And y'all made me a better uh, a better counselor. So, I'm going to uh, finish this and I'm going to post it. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you, Morgan, Logan, all of y'all. Logan, I'm a, I'm a, I promise next week I have Zoom so then we can all speak and y'all won't have to type in sh stuff. Um, yeah. So I'm going uh, I'm to post this. Y'all can keep on commenting. Of course, y'all know I answer back. And yeah, much love to y'all. Um, 
the last dance is about to come on at eight. So I'm I got my little munchies and I'm ready to watch Michael Jordan and them and what happened back in ninety eight with the uh second three P. And uh, I'm gonna check that out and chill and uh and also get ready for work tomorrow, man. But thank y'all, you know, for listening to me and chilling with me and I'm I'll do it again. Uh hopefully next weekend and yep, I'm a Check out Zoom so then we can. Uh, so y'all, if y'all know how to, if y'all got Zoom and y'all can help me get it and then know how to uh, upload it or download it, or whatever. Let me know, Logan. And uh, yep, we'll do it by Zoom so all of us can just talk too. All right, y'all. Deuces.